Hey, thanks for having me here. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about the work I've been doing in my class at Columbia, GSAP, um, which is actually the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. It's okay if you say GSAP. Um, but I actually got my start in architecture um, and similar to the last presenter, I'm kind of curious, um, are people here, anyone in the audience, an architect, urban designer, or real estate person? Cool. Um, and then data science, computer science, uh, cool. Um, and now I work in product management, so business. All right, talk to each other. I guess that's why you're here. Um, and this is my course website, so please uh, also check it out. So unlike artists who use paintbrushes and sculptors who use their hands to form clay, architects don't create buildings directly. They rely on abstraction through models to plan what eventually becomes the real building. Architects distinctly focus on understanding um, both the spatial Wait for it. Drum roll. Aha! There we go. There we go. Um, so architects focus both on the spatial and the physical um, when they're building anything. So this means uh, if you take anything away about what architects do, it's that they focus on the physical elements, the form, the space, um, when modeling uh, a building. And so um, I got introduced to a unique niche within architecture called computational design at a company called SoftLab, where it was especially important to use models both to plan and automate design because the forms we were developing were com particularly complex. So um, just take a look at that. It's without a model, you pretty much can't build it. And because of this complexity, we started to think a lot more uh, about not just the physical aspects, but how, how could we actually do the assembly and how much would it take, time would it take to do each piece? We thought about the behavior of the form through structural stresses, but there was still a question about how people experienced it after we would install something. And how do people uh, behave or use a building after it's created? So there's actually this extra and super important layer of abstraction, which is the behavior and use uh, of something after it's created. Uh, but to understand behavior, we need models that don't just focus on the physical, the three dimensions at a fixed moment in time. When architects model something, they really think about that moment of inception, um, what the physical form will look like. Um, but we need to be able to model behavior, time, movement, um, policy, interaction, which even more importantly changes the what in what is designed. It's not just designing the form, but how it will grow and change and systems that enable interaction um, with that space. So in my class at Columbia's GSAP, just to be short, uh, we develop agent-based models in processing in Python to get designers to think about behavior to see time and growth and policy as a designable system as well. These students' projects look at movement based on road closures, how resources can be shared between neighbors, designing fleet sizes of electric or autonomous vehicles, uh, thinking about park size in relationship to the flooding and rainwater, estimating pickup times based on rules in an app, evacuation based on street grids, uh, rent increase or decrease based on the makeup of a market. But if we look at behavior today, 
it's not just about how space influences behavior. Um, we know that the internet has actually completely changed, fundamentally changed the way we behave in cities. The computerization of every aspect of life has created a very networked society. Today, most of our social and economic relations take place through platforms like Facebook and Venmo. Tinder's matching algorithm leads to an increasing number of matches and marriages each year. Um, ultimately, its algorithm will shape the genetic makeup of the human race as swipes are made, humans are matched, and babies are born. The filters of Street Easy um, dictate what someone sees. They literally filter the makeup of who lives in what neighborhoods, reprogramming entire city zones. Yelp reviews choreograph pedestrian flows through siloed canals across the city. When recommendation engines reinforce a user's preference, they generate spatialized filter bubbles. So the invisible code that powers the city's use may have more drastic influence than any physical invention in the last century. As a spatial data science, as spatial data scientists, and actually for everyone in the room, um, we can use agent-based models, data science and machine learning, to create models which investigate behavior. And that we should recognize that we're really uniquely positioned today to understand behavior because we have a lot more data about what's actually happening. So before my time um, at, uh, as a professor at Columbia and at Sidewalk Labs, I spent some time at the Center for Spatial Research, um, also at Columbia, um, and we were particularly interested in civilian journalism on YouTube because it intentionally captures a lot of information about what's going on on the ground. So in this case, the Syrian civil war, um, you have the civilian journalism uh, in the format of a YouTube video. However, that information is uh, kind of devoid of its larger context. You view it on a white page with no real understanding where is that thing occurring on a map. But civilian journalists are super aware of this. Um, they aim to contextualize where bombings happen, when they happen, um, and then have thus structured a way to name the videos, both with a neighborhood name um, as well as a date, um, which allows us to tie those videos back to a searchable map to understand in aggregate how many bombings had been documented in each uh, neighborhood on particular days. And this has uh, really important repercussions when documenting war crimes um, in facilitating the corroboration of particular events through multiple videos and through a map. So Google Street View is also particularly interesting in the same way, um, very interested in the way imagery captures uh, characteristics about a location, but um, what's really interesting about Google Street View um, is that it's this archive of imagery that's, uh, it, that's categorized by location. And so that means we can take data sets from uh, locations in a city, a list of Starbucks locations, a list of parks, a uh, list of locations where 311 complaints are made, and filter imagery of these locations uh, to understand those characteristics which can also help us understand more fundamental trends, such as um, the Starbucks maybe investing in only higher income locations. But we can also start to investigate the characteristics of the city and ask questions about like, why is the city um, investing in particular streets or locations, or should they be investing in other places that need it the most? If an area is covered in trees and another in power lines, these are very different environments, um, but they really impact the people who live there. Um, maybe we can start to understand how those characteristics impact uh, various locations. And how alluding to pricey uh, or cheapness in the city might impact rent, we can question 
um, probably an infinite amount of things just by looking at the characteristics of street view and uh, where those characteristics occur. Um, so if there's anything that you take away from my talk today, uh, I just want you to, one, um, all the architects and the designers and the spatial data scientists and computer scientists and business people, um, I think there's so much interesting overlap in thinking through uh, spatial models, but also thinking through um, all the characteristics of a city that an architect might be focused on, um, but seeing this more quantitatively and through patterns. Um, and that the internet has fundamentally changed cities. We can design better cities and urban applications even by understanding behavior and the unintended consequences through things like agent-based modeling or understanding data even more uh, like, like imagery, um, understanding that more spatially. Um, so thank you very much. Um, I hope you all get a chance to meet each other. <laughs>